So I've written this book on dynamic proxies, dynamic proxies in Java. And you might wonder, why should you read the book? Why should you get the book, first of all? And how can you get the book? Well, the good news is the book is available for free in the electronic format from InfoQ's website. So go there, search for Heinz Carbots, and you should find it. So it's free. Free as in you can you don't have to pay money for it. Free as in beer. And uh, there's also a book, a printed book you can buy if you like. And of course, I'm very happy if you do. I get a little bit of money for that. But um, you don't need to. You can just get the electronic book. And um, the book doesn't have an index, so it's quite useful to be able to search using the electronic uh, book. Why should you learn this? Well, um, the reason is that it can be sometimes very, very useful to know this. Now, when I look at all the knowledge that a Java programmer could have and could learn, there are some topics which are absolutely essential. You really don't have a choice whether you should learn them or not. And these are, for example, data structures. You, you didn't have a choice. You, you have to know data structures in order to use Java. You have to know the difference between array list and vector and linked list and uh, concurrent skip list set and identity hash map and so forth. You need to know how they work. This is essential for any Java programmer. You have to know design patterns. You, you can't get away from that. You, you just have to know that. There's no choice. Um, you have to know control flow. You can't get away from that. You have to know object orientation. Again, you can't get away from that. This is not advanced knowledge. It's, it's essential knowledge for somebody who, who, who wants to be a Java programmer. But then there's the other topics which, are, um, which will set you apart from the other Java programmers. It'll put you in the top 1% of Java programmers. It'll make you into somebody who's going to develop the next fr Spring framework rather than somebody who just uses the current Spring framework. So it's going to put you at the top of the food chain with Java programmers. So, and, and there are a whole bunch of topics there. For example, concurrency, threading, um, reflection, knowing how that works. Um, and, and this is one of the topics, dynamic proxies is one of the topics that fits into that top 1%. Sometimes this will give you an incredible advantage over somebody who does not know how dynamic proxies work. Dynamic proxies you will probably use three or four times in your career. So why should you read the book if it's only going to be three or four times that you're going to use it? Because those three or four times are going to pay for the time and effort many times over of learning this information. So I've got the book. The book is for free. I've also got a course. This is not free. Uh, the course is how I make my living. And uh, the course has certain um, benefits over and above the book. Of course, you can get most of the information by just reading the book. However, in the course, I also have exercises that we do and the exercises are, um, are very useful to learn how the different uh, approaches or how different techniques work when you work with dynamic proxies. So the first exercise, for example, what we do is we, we create um, a, a, a monitoring framework for monitoring J JDBC, SQL. So you can, you can connect that with any database and it will monitor the time it takes for each of the calls. And the first version is handcrafted, a handcrafted proxy. It takes a very long time. The, the second version is with dynamic proxy. So it's much, much easier, much quicker. It takes only 50 lines as opposed to thousands of lines of code. And, uh, and that's where you see the big difference. And, and then after we've looked at how dynamic proxies um, or how, how, how the mechanism is used to, to create dynamic proxies, we then apply it to other design patterns such as adapter, um, decorator and also com composite or composite. And uh, there's some really interesting problems we try we have to solve there. For example, how does how do you match between different methods if they have the same name and and and, and parameters? How do you match them really quickly? Um, and for two of the chapters, actually, in the chapter with performance analysis, so I I, I do proper JMH benchmarks to see what is faster, this or that. Um, and, and so we can evaluate where the, where the performance benefits are and so on. So I, I spent a lot of time on this, a lot of time on writing the book, a lot of time on, on producing the course. And, um, and it's, I promise you, 
I'll, I'll make you this promise. I, I hate when people say, I promise you this, but I promise you it's not going to be boring, right? <laughs> if it's boring, you get your money back for the book for sure, right? <laughs> you get the money back. <laughs> you will also get the money back for the course if you, if you find it boring for the, in the first 30 days. Um, I really doubt it very much. I think you'll find it absolutely fascinating and, and it might be useful to you either immediately or one day. And when it's useful, the, the payback is so big or is potentially so huge that it's going to be worth it learning this because you might sometimes find it very helpful. I don't recommend that you use dynamic proxies everywhere and every day. If you're using them every day, you're doing it wrong. But if you, if you use them once a year or twice a year and you say, oh, wow, look at this, I've, I've saved like hundreds of thousands of code statements with one single dynamic proxy, then you're getting the full benefits of it. What we've also done is we've, we've put this, the, the, the book samples onto Maven Central. So you can actually include it inside your, inside your project, inside your, directly with Maven, with, inside your POM. Just pull it in and, and boom, you've got it. And, um, and so I don't have any other Java book where the book samples are proper mod, properly modularized with, with JPMS and available on uh, Maven Central the same day that the book was launched. It's all, of, it's all there, right? It's all we've, we've, we've tried to do, be good software engineers, get everything ready at the same time. So, you've got the, so if you want to use some of the ideas from the book, you can just get them into your system with Maven Central, from Maven Central, and you're done. So it's all available. Um, right, I hope you enjoy the book. I really do. Um, and that you're going to learn a lot and find it absolutely fascinating and that you're going to enjoy this course, the, the course as well. Get the course, make sure you get the course, make sure you just study the course, make sure you do all the exercises and then um, you'll be equipped to, to, uh, to be able to, to, to solve some very difficult problems very easily um, like a complete pro. I mean, as I said, this is for the, not, for the, not for the real average programmer, but this is for the person who finds writing CRUD applications dead boring and wants something more interesting. For the person who wants to develop the next Spring framework or even even bigger and better, whatever. This this is how this is how we do. Enjoy.